Well, it's become pretty obvious at this point that the Big 12 would really like to add Colorado, but should they want to add Colorado? Depends on who you ask. You are Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On Pac-12 with a little bit of a different look. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day if you're watching on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day and your number one source to stay up to date with our media rights free and beloved conference of champions. Like, comment, subscribe, please, and thank you wherever you listen to or watch this show. Rate, review us as well if you listen on Apple Podcasts. And if we're talking about Colorado today, we have to do so with Kevin Borba. And look, There is Kevin Borba. He's the host of Locked on Buffs Monday through Friday on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And Kevin, the uh, internet is a buzzing about Colorado as of late. So how are things over in Buffs country right now? You know, Buffs country is very um, conflicted, confused, just all around. Just I don't know what's going on in terms of why the sudden the suddenness and all this belief in certain um, reports. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll get to the, uh, shall we say, skepticism I have on uh, some of the reporting. Uh, mm-hmm. That comes a bit later in in the show. We'll talk about what Colorado should want out of all this. But Brett Yormark, Big 12 fans, Big 12 media people are apparently making it quite clear, and Yormark has before, they would like to add Colorado. But An interesting question, Kevin, is if you just take a step back for a moment, are there a lot of conferences that would want to add? And I do think there is some value in adding Colorado if you're if you're the Big 12. But it's kind of strange to be that passionately driven to get a school that's had a losing football season in 15 of the last 17 years has not done anything of notice in the NCAA tournament for a conference that prides itself on being the best basketball league in the country in the big 12. So this is something that the big 12 would like to have, of course, but is Colorado that valuable? Like, would they be in a, in a world in which the buffs say, Nope, the media deal is not good enough. We want to go back to the big 12. Is that materially changing the value of the big 12 conference? Um, I think now with Deion Sanders, there's a big difference. It kind of reminds me of like when you get your braces off and people start to notice your smile a little more. Um, I myself had braces and I, I don't I want to say I had a little glow up when I got them off, but I did win best smile senior year. So it's like <laughs> people start to notice. And so I feel like with the hiring of Deion Sanders, um, so subtly flex that high school success, you know, um, but the hiring of Deion Sanders, I think makes Colorado that much more attractive. Um, I kind of think that's the main reason. Um, I don't know if they're getting which obviously we could play this hypothetical game. Would they be getting the same amount of buzz with Carl Durrell if he was still the head coach? I don't know, because then it would be like a few years ago when Kansas was really bad at football. Would it be interesting enough for the Pac-12 to add a bad football program just for the sake of getting their basketball program? It kind of reminds me of that, except Colorado's not that good at, or they haven't been that good at anything, really. Um, I think in terms of the market, we talked about it off air. They have a pretty good market, top 20 in the country. Um They offer a different time zone. Um, The Big 12 is very big on being in different time zones. Um, They're basically, I think, in every time zone but the mountain time zone. No, they've got – well, they've got BYU now. So they've got got three. Your mark has expressed a desire, and I think wisely so as your commissioner, to get Mm -hmm. into a fourth, hence the pressure on – you know, the, the so-called four corner schools and whatnot, but they, right. they've, they've dipped their toe into the water with the mountain time zone, but that's right. why further westward expansion for the big 12 doesn't at all seem out of the realm of possibility. Colorado is not Pacific time zone per se, but still having a greater footprint in, you know, that part of the country is, is clearly valuable to the big 12. And I think there's a, a lot of logic in that. And can I just say, I don't believe in the mountain time zone. Makes no sense. You pick one. You're, you're central or Pacific. You, do, you don't get to be mountain. Um, but either excuse way, excuse me. Excuse me. As someone who lives in the mountain time zone, can I just say that there is a nice balance between not having to be up so early to watch college football in the NFL while not being so, you know, far apart from my West Coast sports loves, of which I have several. I feel that. I, I'm just saying it's weird to me. But yeah, I think 
they offer a great market. Um, Coach Prime is really Deion Sanders. He brings a brand. And honestly, I've talked about this every time I talk about the Big 12. They do not have a brand program right now where it's like, oh, wow, they have who? Like Texas and Oklahoma are literally two of the top seven brands in college football. They're losing that. And none of the schools they brought in are going to equate to that brand. None of the schools that they already have equate to that brand. TCU is kind of the hot team right now because they made it to the playoff, but TCU's brand is not anywhere compared to Texas or Oklahoma. And so I think while Colorado hasn't succeeded on the field yet, I think Deion Sanders kind of brings that cachet, if you will. And I think that's why. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you that that's part of the appeal because you, 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 you made a great hypothetical and that's, would you be so on the fence if you were a Big 12 fan or if you're a commissioner or president or whoever wanting Colorado back, if Carl Durrell were still the head coach? Probably not, right? But you look at Dion and you say, okay, there's a guy who brings a lot of attention, who brings eyeballs. The schedule, by the way, was released a couple days ago. Five games on national te- Five TV. nationally televised games. Before, you know, a season ago, Colorado had the uh, the TCU game was on national TV. I think the Air Force game was. See, I, don't, I don't remember. I was on the Colorado beat then. Yeah, uh, but 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 regardless, the, they, the one in eleven Colorado buffs. <laughs> yeah, more often than not, they were put on Pac-12 network, and now right. you know having Dion there does make that appealing. But the other thing that I know some people, as we are are, are uh, uh, premiering the show, are already typing out in the YouTube comment section, will point out that Dion may be temporary at Colorado. And that the value is not, you know, sustainable on that front, which I agree with, because I think if the right SEC job came open, Dion would go. But we're a couple of years out for that number one and everything, you know, for the Big 12 and Pac-12 on the realignment front we've talked about before here on the show. Everything is kind of a short term. What is the best right. move you can make? It's not, right. you know, play the long game. And, yeah. you know, I mean, G5 yeah. editions are. That argument makes no sense because let's, let's think about it this way. Sorry to cut you off, but You're good. If, I, if I said I was going to pay you $10 million for three years and then I'm going to leave after three years, are you just going to turn down my $10 million? No. Like Exactly. You're going to take the money where you could get it. They're going to take the, the viewership where they can. And if Deion Sanders does leave Colorado, hopefully if that were to happen, Colorado can find a, I won't say similar replacement, but someone who can kind of keep that momentum going. Um, right. And I don't know why people are – He's going to leave in four years. Who cares? They're still going to make money off of yep, him. Yep. Completely That's agree. I, I think <laughs> there, there's a financial component to it, but there's also a reputation standpoint is if you go to Colorado, which has done nothing for the last two decades in large part on the football field, and you recruit at a level that they haven't seen before and then leave after four years, you have now, number one, laid a blueprint for future coaches that, hey, this is actually possible. You can, you know, recruit and win games here. And by the way, he would only be leaving if he had a lot of success at Colorado. And then number two, if he does that, think about the caliber of coach and recruiters that you can then attract if the job is seen as more desirable, right? So that outcome, I I think, would be, you know, maybe unfortunate for the Buffs because you never know who they're going to be able to hire. But if Dion does what he, he might be capable of, just given the way that he can talent and bring in, uh, or recruit and bring in talent via the transfer portal, then you're going to be able to attract a higher profile coach the next time around uh, if and and perhaps when the job uh, does come available. And that's part of the reason that uh, you make this higher as well. You also want them to win in uh, the short term and such. But th- th- there's another reason that the Big 12 would want to add uh, Colorado, not just for Dion, not just for uh, the media market. And I'm going to ask you about that, Kevin. But I'm going to tell everybody about FanDuel first because FanDuel is where you should make a fast break to during the NBA Finals, which have already seen one game go in the book. So don't miss your chance because there's only so many games left. I like Denver in five, by the way. But right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. They've got great promotions every day. they got a safe secure super easy to use app with a good interface you get paid instantly and there's just no better place to bet all the playoff action or anything college football related like if you think we're underselling colorado here and you want to bet them over three and a half wins fanduel is the place 
to do it. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Drink that water. Yeah, <laughs> you got to you get dry mouth doing this stuff sometimes. And I've had it really, really bad today. But so here's the other thing for for the Big 12 in the era of, you know, aggressive wins and you're either on offense or you're playing defense. You're the hunter, the hunted like that's how realignment feels right now. Even if Colorado never rebuilds under Dion or otherwise to what it once was as a football brand. I think if you're the Big 12, there's something to be said about making an offensive move, which is what they are trying to do, and getting a Power 5 school to come to your conference. It's not an easy thing, as the Big 12 knows, because the Big 12 lost Texas and Oklahoma. They went and added four or three G5s and an independent in, in BYU. And by the way, some, some people were saying that BYU was a Power 5 independent, which is an oxymoron. So... Let's just get that out of the way. A good independent, by the way. Like, I, I like that addition for, for the Big 12 a lot. I really do. Second best independent out there, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. So when you're in that situation of conference realignment and all you have is G5 additions, you'll take any Power 5 team that you can get because, no, Colorado has not been good in the Pac-12. They, they, there, there is no guarantee, I suspect, that if Dion and Coach uh, Dion and the Buffs uh, stick around in the Pac-12 just by lieu of their recruiting, they'll be able to win at you know at least some solid level. But there's no guarantee of that. But even if that's the case, Kevin, I think the factors that you talked about, you know, the optics of getting a Power Five school to go from that conference to your conference, I think, can snowball into momentum, and that's why you see the Big Twelve going after the Buffs here. Yeah, and I think. The Big 12, as Paul Feinbaum, a um, notorious SEC guy, he said the Big 12 is the hottest – or something to this effect, the Big 12 is like the hottest conference in the country right now. And I think the reason they've been so successful is because they've been – He did. They have, he did, yeah. He he hyped up some, the Big 12 the other day. The, the, um, the, hot, the hottest in, in like in like in what sense? I'm curious. The, I just didn't hear right, that. Like a rising conference in terms of like additions and like their efforts to do other things. Um, but what I'm saying is the Big 12 is kind of – they haven't been afraid to make – Big moves. Um, if the Pac-12 go back a year and a half now, if they were willing to take in the three or four Big 12 schools that were begging to join the conference, the Big 12 would be in the situation where it's like, what do we do? Like, we don't have anything. And so it's all just a matter of, I think, being on the offensive side at the right time. And so what should Colorado want, I think, is the big question. I think Colorado should just want some, to know what they're doing. I think the reason that most people are gravitating towards the Big 12 right now is because there's certainty. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding the Pac-12, and uncer uncertainty scares people. And so I personally wouldn't want to take a job if I don't know if I'm going to have that job in a month or a week or, you know. So I think the Big 12 right now, they kind of have the foundation laid out, so it looks like the better opportunity. But again, everybody on in every Pac-12 program has restated multiple times that if the Big 12 deal is not or the Pac-12 deal, excuse me, so many 12s to throw around right now. <laughs> if, if the deal is not nearly as attractive as um, they hope, then then they'll consider leaving. But if it's basically the same, there's no reason to leave. So I kind of think that shows that the Big 12 is not that, I won't say not that attractive, but it's not that crazy of a, a stretch to be like, pe people want to stay in the Pac-12. Yeah, th this next statement I'm going to make is going to anger any and all Big 12 fans out there, but nobody wants to join the big 12 that doesn't mean that teams wouldn't eventually feel that they would get forced to go there but if they wanted to go there they'd already be there because the big 12 wants them the big 12's got a clause in their media rights contract to be able to add power five schools and not materially alter the the payouts per school because espn has said we'll pay for you know most of a new team and fox is like i will pay for a little bit of it and such but it would still be worthwhile overall if any of these schools, like, like th this is a semantical difference, but it's a really, really important one in these discussions because one day could end up there is not the same as wanting to go there. Colorado Athletic Director Rick George, and I talked about it, I'm pretty sure it was earlier this week on the show. I all, Every day blends together, essentially, especially with all this stuff. But so if you missed that, I'll, I'll kind of summarize really quickly here. He left the door 
absolutely cracked open for a potential move and said, look, we have to do what's in the best interests of Colorado at the end of the day. That was on the heels of him saying, we're proud members of the Pac-12. In a perfect world, we stay in the Pac-12. We need to see where the media rights deal is. And that, I think, is a very fair, open, and honest way to look at the situation. It's like, okay, we want to be in this conference. We left the other conference for a reason. We're not itching to go back. However, should the worst come to pass, that's something that we're going to have to be prepared for, that we have to be able to you know, adapt if we see the landscape changing and we have to be able to, in this you know, wild, crazy, unpredictable world, be able to kind of turn on a dime and say, okay, this is now in our best interests is to move in this direction. But just because you have a, uh, have a storm shelter or you have a tornado cellar, doesn't mean you are actively anticipating a tornado that you can see coming two miles away. It means that if that tornado touches down nearby, you're going to be prepared for it and you're going to have a plan. So if you see it in the forecast, you go down into the storm shelter and then you wait it out and such. And obviously they wouldn't be waiting it out, but you, you get the point I'm making, like being it's prepared a, for it's every a scenario. It's yeah. a <laughs> like you, you don't want to have, you're not going to, treat every day as an emergency. Um, like you said, if, if they no, say they're going to be ready prepared, for one. Yeah. You're going to be ready, but I think it's a contingency. Um, I think people just, the, the reports are in it saying, if you like read far enough into them as well, the ones that are not by um, weird sources, the one Dennis Dodd by CBS sports, for example, if you read far enough into it, it says they've been talking for months. So it's not like all of a sudden Colorado is just like, Hey, you up, like we're scared and we need, to, we need to join the big 12. It's like, Hey, we've been talking, we're laying the groundwork because if this deal is not what we want, we're going to leave. But again, let's wait to see the deal. And I think that's the, uh, the biggest point. And we talked about it multiple times, kind of off camera and over text messages. Why would Colorado or any program for any, for any reason, for that matter, leave their conference, the PAC 12 specifically, if they don't know what the deal is going to be. Like that makes no sense. You're, mm -hmm. You've waited. It's been nearly a year. Um, big, USC and UCLA left for the Big Ten in July, and we're in June. So you're gonna tell you're telling me you waited 11 months to leave right before it could happen? Exactly. That's, that that doesn't make sense to me. No, but. no, it would it would make no sense, and it would, however, make a lot of sense to wait for the to wait to see what the final deal ends up being, and if it's within range and it's not gonna you know make a huge difference then they're going to want to stay in the Pac-12, which is what they've stated and I think makes a lot of sense. But if the deal is way off and, you know, every piece of messaging that the, the Pac-12 presidents and athletic directors, Rob Mullins, Oregon's AD, was recently on the record with John Canzano saying, look, we just need to get the deal done, but we feel perfectly confident about where it's going to end up. They've repeated that over and over again. Now, maybe that's coach speak, right? Maybe Orphan, that's big, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, it absolutely is. But it only matters from programs that, like Oregon State and Washington State. I, I especially think. Yeah. I'm not trying to hate on them, but when they say everything's fine, it's like, well, you guys kind of need it to be fine because it, it, yeah, you guys exactly. Are problem now, but when and I, and I said I, I said the same thing back on the show when you know comments were first coming out from presidents and ads, Oregon State and Washington State were the first ones presidents or athletic directors to go on the record. I think both presidents did interviews about this sort of stuff, and I was like, mm -hmm. well, okay, yeah. Like, 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 of course, you're going to, you know, paint this as uh, in, in, in as positive a light as as you possibly can, because they have easily the most to lose in in, in the conference here, because it's unclear where, what their what their home would be if, right. you know, doomsday really arrives and the Pac-12 were, were to just uh, implode like that. But if the messaging from presidents, athletic directors in the Pac-12 is not accurate or they have been misled, or they are BSing whatever may have you, and the media deal is way off from the Big 12, then yes, schools should be prepared to go elsewhere. But I, I get the sense that it's going to come within, within range sufficiently to where the schools are like, okay, we're not going. You know, the Arizona president at one point in time said very openly, why would we go for a couple million dollars more? Right. And I think that's the mindset in most schools. Now, if you're talking eight to ten million dollars, OK, now we've got a gap. Right. Because now that conference might be able to poach some assistant coaches that you're not able to pony up and pay for because you're not getting enough money. OK, 
that's a conversation we can have. But if you get within range, I think you're you're, you're I think you're good enough on on that front. They're just going to have to be creative. Um, the Pac-12 deal is not going to be, and I've been telling everybody this, ask me about it. It's not going to be your, okay, we're on ESPN, we're on Fox Sports. It might be, okay, we're on ESPN sometimes, CW also, and then also on Apple. It's going to be creative. Um, I think they're trying to figure out a way to get to that number so that way they don't have to worry about people leaving. Yeah, uh, let, let's get to the, the other couple bullet points you can see up there on uh, the rundown for today's show. Um, before we get to what Colorado should want in your view, Kevin, uh, let's just put out what we might call a PSA for everybody out there. So Rick George, in those same comments that everybody was losing their minds over, uh, he had a line in there. It was actually the first thing he said in which he, uh, on the record, made it very clear, quote, you can only believe about a third of what's out there. Well, it turns out he was right because yesterday there was this report flying around Twitter. And when I say flying around, I mean hundreds of thousands of people saw it and thousands of people treated it as legitimate without hesitation. It was from Justin Cohen at Bad Boy of Scoops who uh, the bio of this account is NFL and college football insider for the Tallahassee Journal. Now, the interesting thing about this guy, Kevin, is that he is working, if he's even a real person, for an organization that does not exist. It does not exist. But it was flying around and everybody was leaping on it. And it's just straight to Rick George's point. When you see something about realignment, be very sure where it is coming from and that it's an actual legitimate source. Because a quick Google search would have showed you, hey, the Tallahassee Journal doesn't exist unless it's been rebranded to the Tallahassee Democrat, which it hasn't because the Tallahassee Journal is not real. So this was literally a fake report flying around a lot of people were looking at it reading it and saying oh my gosh yeah this is about to happen and whatnot and it was not and it just serves as a reminder be very careful in today's world he does pay for the eight dollar subscription so i mean <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, th Shout I think out elon that's what i miss most about old twitter is like I didn't realize how important verifications were. I thought I was kind of like, ah, oh, who cares? But then like now everybody could be verified. And so that stuff like this happens. And I think it kind of just sends a mixed message. I know these, it's like, uh, I don't know if I'm, we're allowed to this, that one sport BS sports. Um, I don't know if we're allowed to say oh, that. Yeah, no, probably good that you're, that you abbreviated yeah, that. BS sports where they kind of tweet fake things or there's debussing films where it's like, a very notable film Twitter page that kind of tweets the opposite of like what she like, they would be say, I got cast to play the little mermaid or something like that. It's like, that's what this guy basically is in the sports world. And it's, it's unfortunate that people are falling for it. And it's also unfortunate that I don't know. It's like the PAC 12, this all goes back onto the PAC 12 because if they would just give us like some semblance of a deal, we wouldn't have to deal with uh, correct the, yep. Tal the Tallahassee right. Google or whatever they are. <laughs> Tallahassee journal journal. Thank you. <laughs> It's just amazing that this is the point that we've reached. And look, this is the downside of letting it go on this long. Is like your league takes a PR hit because this sort of stuff gets out there and people will believe it. And it, it just it's it's just this ongoing circus and it's just utterly ridiculous. And it's why I would very much like for them to finish up the deal as soon as possible. But let's uh get to our last bullet point of the day here, Kevin, and that's what you think Colorado should want, because there are, you know, Big 12 fans who want Colorado. There are Pac-12 fans who want Colorado to stay. There are Big 12 fans who maybe don't want the like you can find everybody uh, or every every opinion that you want from someone. If you look out there hard enough, because there are a lot of college sports fans in the world. Gratefully so, because they're tuning into the show right now, which we greatly appreciate. But what do you think Colorado should want? Should they want to go? back to the big 12 i think if the okay this is not going to be probably the answer you're looking for if the if the deal is better in the big 12 by far than it is in the pac 12 then yeah if it's not then no i don't think there's we've been talking about this whole time i don't really think there's that much of a a step up 
from the Big 12 to the Pac-12 in terms of um, brands. Um, I think the Pac-12, if it's all together, they have three national brands in Oregon, Utah. I think Stanford, when they're good, is a national brand that people I think you put. I think you'd have to put Washington in Washington. there, too. And then the Big 12, it's like TCU now. Um, Oklahoma Bay- State sometimes. Baylor, Baylor maybe. Hasn't been good since RG3 or – Jared Stidham. No, they, like, won the, they won the Big 12 championship two years ago. They did. It's just, I don't know. It's not the same. Like, they're, they're not consistently. It's not. Baylor's right. not a brand. Like, right, right. Yeah, no, they went from 11 and 2 to 6 and 7. Right. And so, so like, like, they can they can fluctuate. I think the Big 12, I, I think they're just confident right now. You know, they've, they've been playing offense. And when you're playing offense and you're scoring, everything feels great. And so, they've been playing good offense, and it's been working out for them. Um, but I really think the Pac-12 is a place to be, um, especially – you have the playoff expanding to 12 teams. Why would you want to make it harder to join a conference that's trying to be at 16 teams when you could be in a conference that has 12 teams? I'm not saying that Colorado wants to run from competition, but you have a better chance of getting the automatic bid for the playoff if you're in a 12 or 14 team conference than a 16 team conference. Um, I think how how attractive is a Colorado to West Virginia trip? I don't I think when you start thinking about who's in the Big 12 as well, it's like Okay, does it make sense to be going to car from Colorado to UCF? Does it make sense to go to West Virginia? Um, geography is obviously dead because USC is going to be playing conference games in New Jersey, but <laughs> I think the Pac-12 is still trying to hold on to that. And I think, and again, unless it's a significant amount of money that Colorado is losing out on, there's really no reason to go to the Big 12. I just don't think there is. And, and the other thing too, you bring up the the extended travel. Whenever, you know, you're talking about the difference and like, oh, how many million dollars can it be? The travel in the Big 12. Now, Colorado is, is like kind of split down the middle, sort right. of. But trips to UCF are not just there potentially for their football team. They're there for the basketball teams, both of which are, are tend to be non-revenue sports. Men's basketball maybe, you know, breaks even at Colorado. I haven't crunched the numbers and such. But every other sport doesn't make money. So the money that goes to the athletic department from the media deal goes to help pay for everybody. It's not it's not just going to football. So that's why the gap would have to be so large because your travel costs in in the Big 12, I believe are, are higher than they are in, in in the Pac-12, that's my understanding. Now that's less true for Colorado than it would be for like the Arizona schools for instance, which are further away or you know Oregon or Washington or Oregon State Washington State somebody like that. But that is a component to all of this which is if you're going to change conferences and you're like, well, you know, we're going to get another $5 million from the media deal. Well, if you're increased travel costs for everybody, because you got to stay extra nights because you're further away. So you can't come back and you got to pay for more meals and hotel for all these sports. If your extra costs are $3 million, you're actually gaining $2 million. Is, is, is that moving the needle? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say no. And again, it, it depends. Each school can be different. I don't have exact data in front of me with that, but the concept is correct. That if you are going to have increased travel costs, that's going to offset any financial gain that you would make from a better media deal. Right. I just, like you said, is, is the appeal there? Unless it's like, if they're going to offer 10 more million dollars, I'd be like, yeah, why wouldn't you? But realistically, I just don't see the appeal being there. Um, I think Colorado has a brighter future in the PAC 12. And then I keep seeing, which, I mean, it makes sense. I'm sure Lincoln Riley didn't take the USC job without the at least knowing about the Big Ten stuff. Steve Sarkeesian at Texas, I'm sure he there was talks about the SEC stuff when he was hired or whatever. I don't think basing what you want to do off of what your coach wants, because Deion Sanders does have Texas ties, is not that important. Like, obviously, he wants to get back to Big 12 country recruiting-wise or SEC country, whatever, whatever you consider Texas to be. But – is that all you're going to base it off of? Because he's already tapping into Florida and Texas and he doesn't play any schools in Florida and Texas. So I don't think there's really a, a legitimate reason out there where I've been like, yeah, Colorado needs to go to the big 12. Kevin Borba locked on buffs on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts Monday through Friday, Kevin, great stuff today. Thank you. Appreciate all of you listening. However, and wherever you do that, I will see you next time. No show on Monday back Tuesday until then. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.